Yeah, we are at Strix at the moment, where you had your opening last night. Could you tell me a bit more about the background of this project? Yeah, so this is a project that began three years ago when I had a residency with the Oxford University criminologist Mary Bosworth, who had a big uh, European Research Council grant to go inside the detention centres in the UK to study what the effect was on the subjectivity of those detained before being deported from the UK. And so I went into these places and the main character and um, also one of the models in, in the exhibition, as you saw, is this building, this detention centre. So everything in the project um, is told through the perspective of this, of this architecture that sees everything that happens within. So that was a way for me to gather all the testimonies, all the, the drawings and materials that I had collected the stories and to, to retell them from my own perspective in a sense. But my own perspective being one that um, used various voices because there were so many, um, on one hand so many perspectives, but on the other hand very similar stories that were being told by people who were being kept for or are being kept every day for um, indeterminate amounts of time. So that's what really interested me, what's the effect of not knowing how long you're going to be locked up or whether you'll be able to stay or be deported. So that kind of terrible situation was one that I've been working on for years, I think, somehow. So how long did you spend on research for this project? It's been a long research process. Um, my work is usually based in long-term engagement in a topic. In this case, I've been working for a year intensively with the criminologists, anthropologists at Oxford University and inside doing field work with them inside the centres. And then um, I went away and did a residency in a theatre called Paper Moon um, in Indonesia for a festival where they focus on puppetry. I always wanted to become a puppeteer and so they taught me how to make puppets in an Indonesian style but then I brought my own characters from the detention centre project. So the puppets are like the criminologist is one of the puppets and the CEO of the detention center and, and myself of course because I thought I can't just make puppets of other people. So then I began to develop a, a play, a performance based on that material. Yesterday we had your performance here. Mm. Could you tell me a bit more about that particular performance? Mm. Yeah, sure. The performance is based on an idea that migrants live in the shadows. Mm. I, I, it, it, I, it, is, it. And that in that shadow world we might find ourselves also. And unlike in Plato's cave where we're all kind of slaves in this shadow world, I'm quite intentionally going into these shadows and articulating their particular position using shadow puppets, using my own shadow, using these different kind of shadowy figures of the CEO of the company, so using a mask in that case. Again, in a kind of technique that I learned on that residency in Indonesia where there's a very uh, sophisticated performance tradition, very minimal movements and props. I guess I'm also in, the, in that performance, I'm trying to embody the stories that I was told. So behind you we've got the four photographs or rather they are collages. Yeah. Could you tell me more specifically about those four, four photographs? Yeah, absolutely. So the photographs were taken inside the detention centres as I was doing that field work, I was talking about the research process. And then I wasn't sure how to show them, there's a lot of prison photography, a lot of empty rooms, a lot of very cold sort of bureaucratic spaces that don't really tell you much about this feeling that I was trying to evoke. So I wanted to work with the drawings that had been made um, and I had the table of the drawings here um, and I wanted to mix those because they are so full of affect in a way and so full of that, um, that interiority that I could sense from the men. So I worked with the graphic designer, artist Christoph Balzar now on a book project which is these overlays of the drawings onto the photographs and that's what these collages are in a sense that on one hand these empty cold kind of 
interior architectural shots that I took and then the drawings by the men. And talking generally about your work, how would you describe it? What is the nature of your work? I think I'm a storyteller that is trying to show invisible, hidden, um, often hidden stories that are kept that way because, because it benefits the people in power. And so I think that my role is really as a mediator to uncover those things through the skills that I learned also as a historian and then I use materials in order to to tell those stories. Yeah, I think the nature of my work, I mean a lot of it has been kind of post-colonial working on um, marginalized voices and uh, stories of people who can't get their voices heard I suppose. That's a, mm -hmm. that's sort of a problematic position that I have chosen to mm -hmm. take and um, and I've moved more and more into the realm of a kind of poetic, you know, a lot of it is text-based, performance-based. So I use language to, I guess, articulate things that I think uh, only language can do, that mm -hmm. maybe images can't do on their own. Really, we're here today to celebrate our achievements, because it's important in our globalized world to know where the borders lie how doors are opened. That is in all of our interests and that is what we at Border Management specialize in. Thank mm -hmm. you. 